the closest English word for the ancient Greek term eudaimonia is probably flourishing. The philosopher Aristotle used it as a broad concept to describe the highest good humans could strive toward or a life well lived. Those scholars translated eudaimonia as happiness for many years. There are clear differences. For Aristotle, eudaimonia was achieved through living virtuously or what you might describe as being good. This doesn't guarantee happiness in the modern sense of the word. In fact, it might mean doing something that makes us unhappy, like telling an upsetting truth to a friend. Virtue is moral excellence. In practice, it is to allow something to act in harmony with its purpose. As an example, let's take a virtuous carpenter. In their trade, virtue should be would be excellences in artistic eye, steady hand, patience, creativity, and so on. The Eudemon carpenter is one who possesses and practices the virtues of his trade. By extension, the Eudemon life is one dedicated to developing the excellences of being human. For Aristotle, this meant practicing virtues like courage, wisdom, good humor, moderation, kindness, and more. This sense of happiness as defined by Aristotle is eudaimonia, the highest human good. This concept of the highest good strives away from other desires or intentions, not to be confused with other ideals such as hedonism. A hedonist functions for self-pleasure, to indulge themselves with the aspiration of maximizing physical and sensory enjoyment. This desire for physical enjoyment is no different from animals eating or mating. We seek to explore and classify different qualitative levels of happiness, and this is known as qualitative hedonism. Aristotle criticizes this structure of happiness due to its temporary nature and does not seek to achieve human excellence or fulfill the potential of an individual. Today, when we think about a flourishing person, virtue doesn't always spring to mind. Instead, we think about someone who, has, who is relatively successful, healthy, and with access to a range of the good things in life. We tend to think flourishing equals good qualities plus good fortune. For instance, Aristotle thought philosoph- philosophical contemplation was an intellectual virtue. But to have the time necessary for contemplation, you would need to be wealthy. Wealth, as we all know, is not always a product of virtue. In recognizing our ability to practice virtue might be somewhat outside our control, Aristotle acknowledges our flourishing is vulnerable to misfortune. The things that happen to us can not only hurt us temporarily, but they can put us in a position where our flourishing, the highest possible good we can achieve, is irrevocably damaged. Aristotle believes that to achieve a state of eudaimonia, it is not through an accumulation of individual happy incidents that, when reaching a certain quantity, would equate to having lived a fulfilled life, nor could material gains or wealth define a well-fulfilled life. The philosopher believes that happiness is, in fact, um, the end goal of every human, and in turn, it is to achieve a means to a higher end. This is because events of happiness may only be those of temporary relief and do not necessarily promote the fulfillment of an individual. We do daily tasks that may seem tedious or not immediately rewarding such as getting an education or general hygiene practices in the hopes of achieving something else. The repetitive nature of these daily tasks may allow one to become a virtuous person who can achieve a state of eudaimonia. When doing these tasks, one must not act regarding the opinion of others or because he believes it to be the right thing to do, but rather by unconscious nature. One is only truly virtuous when virtuous behavior is exhibited by one's own repeated habits and is conducted without the purpose or expectation of a response from the conduct. The behavior in itself must be conducted for the purpose of its goal and not driven by an ulterior motive. By combining the repetitive virtuous nature as well as acting to promote the enrichment of human life, the highest human good can be achieved.